Hello there and welcome to another Tuesday Thoughts. Uh, I thought I'd jump on here and do a, a little card reading, intuitive card reading. Uh, I was going to do it a little while ago and then I got a call to go to the dentist. Uh, so I had to race out of here, run quickly to the dentist and then come back. It was quieter earlier. There's someone putting scaffolding up outside. <laughs> so every time I do this, there's always a ton of outside noise, but can't be helped. Hopefully you won't hear it as much as I hear it. Um, <laughs> in saying that, you probably can. Um, so today is Tuesday the 26th of April. Sorry, it's just making me giggle because every time I try and do this, some noise happens. So um, before I left, I had started um, left for the dentist. I had started uh, with the tarot. Two cards jumped out. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me as well. I still have a tickly cough. Um, two cards jumped out. I haven't looked at them yet. So I'm just going to get one more card and see what uh, that says. And then we'll just do a little bit of a quick reading. Just get the energy of today. We're coming up to the uh, full moon eclipse, which is quite a powerful time of year. And I've been listening to some people report on it. And they've been saying, oh, okay. They've been saying things like, you know, I think back to about 10, 11, 12 years ago, um, what was kind of going on then. And oh, there's too many there. There's too many on that one. So I'll just go with that and then we might do something different. In fact, I might just choose, I might just use another deck as well. So this is an Ask Your Guides deck and it's quite an interesting deck to work with. Um, but as I was saying, I was saying thinking back to 12 years ago, what kind of things happened, what you were focused on, what was happening in your life. Usually an element of change. So you made a big decision or something came into your life or went out of your life. Um, and uh, so it might be time for that kind of thing to happen again. So it could be quite big and uh, something that will shift your life in a new direction in some way so let's just take one more from the guides please one more card from the guides uh oh, they're a bit a bit fidgety these guides and um we'll see we'll see what that brings to the reading so let's have a look one more card please i hope you're all well hope you're enjoying the good weather it's nice even though it's still not hot hot ah there we go Fine, we've got that one. Is there another one? Let's come over that one. Yeah, so I think that's it. That's grand. Okay, so uh, those are sort of the backup ones, and then I'll go with the first two. So they were still turned over, so we'll look at them now. <coughs> okay, okay, and I might need to look at the book for one of them as well just to get a better idea but as I was saying like I hope you're well hope you're enjoying the weather hope you're enjoying uh you know we've had a nice Easter break some of the kids have been off so that's been good and um, we're kind of running into now sort of the middle of the year so um there is an element of you know the different phases that come in the year and the different energies that you might have uh, the energy that you feel in yourself as well so the first card today, today, tonight, today, um, is the Ten of Wands. Now have a look at this card. He is carrying quite the burden. He is carrying a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts, a lot of creativity, and he's carrying them all at once. And he doesn't want to let go of them. He's holding on tight to all of these ideas, all of these creative ideas all of these um, desires to, to manifest things, you know, things he wants in his life, things he wants and he doesn't want to leave behind. But he's struggling. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of ideas, a lot of thinking, a lot of processing. There's a lot of creativity that comes with us. And like these ones, like the scaffolding outside, they can be quite heavy and burdensome to carry. And I've just noticed the scaffolders outside and they're carrying one bar at a time. They don't carry a whole host of them. Can you imagine if they fell over, if they were carrying a whole host of these and they fell over? I don't know if host is the collective <laughs> for 
a, a, a group of scaffolding poles. Um, but yeah, like they're doing it one at a time. They're focused. And now they're making even more noise. Um, and they're placing these things onto the back of the lorry and they're securing them. They're making them secure before they go and get some more. So there's an element of understanding that you're on this journey. There is a path towards, I'm not sure if you can see, but there is a path here and it's going off to the castle in the distance and he's trying to bring everything with him. And these are precious to him. He has worked on these as well. So he's worked on these ideas, these creative projects, and he doesn't want to leave anything behind. But he is burdening himself and it is it feels a little bit awkward. It feels like quite a task to carry these forward to the castle. So there's an element of knowing that you might have to place some of these ideas down for the moment. It could be pointing to the eclipse where it could be all change. So you might have to drop some of these ideas. Let's just look at what the book says about this one. So the Ten of Wands. It's sometimes good just to, to read a little on what it says. And it says it epitomizes the negative aspect of the fire element which lies in desire not to believe that boundaries or limitations exist. Uh, it makes you feel that you can do anything without any consequence. However, this Ten of Wands dis depicts what will happen if the limits are overreached. So he's, he's trying to do too much at the one time, carrying too much, overworking, overdoing, expending his energy. And so the bundle traps the figure in the image, yet there's nothing to suggest that he's been forced to carry his load this way. So it's kind of burdening him, he's holding on, he's trying to grapple with all of them to keep them upright. But there's nothing to say he can't drop them, take one, walk down the path to the house, drop the, the one and come back and get some more. There's nothing to say you can't do it differently. So that's an aspect we we'll probably look at because of that. Um, it could be a sign that the artist who enthusiastically takes on many commissions and then finds him or herself physically unable to carry out the work. And that's that you're spreading yourself too thin. You might have lots of interests and lots of different things that you want go to have going on. And I myself can be a bit like that. I can do the painting, I can do the reading, I can do the healing, the channeling, trying to get everything in. And it does spread you very thin as well as working like a regular job. So you have to be aware of that and your physical capacity to do whatever jobs are necessary. So again, it's, it's understanding what these will say burdens, but they might just be, you know, activities or interests that you have and how it can tax yourself and tax your mind and tax your energy um, because you're trying to do too much at the one time. So like the scaffolders, you might have to drop one and take one at a time. Be okay with not doing everything at the one time. And because of this burdensome, your creative joy and your excitement actually is taxed. It's actually um, oppressive and it, that it can feel arduous. So what you want in the wants is creativity, freedom, passion, fieriness, you know, this, this, this um, energy, this life force. That's what you want in the wands. But because you're just grappling at too many at once, it turns it into something quite negative. It does become burdensome. <coughs> so the solution here lies in taking time to lay down the burdens and then slowly work out a more comfortable and effective way of carrying them to the city. So that's what I was saying. So there's nothing to stop him dropping the wands taking one at a time or two at a time into the castle, into the city ahead. And he will get there. It's just a different way of doing it. And that might be scheduling. That might be, you know, planning your to-do list. 
that might be organizing yourself in a particular way so you're not overdoing you're not overstretching yourself physically emotionally mentally all these things are really important if you want to achieve and enjoy the achievements so we can be on this path and doing all these different things but then sometimes it kind of takes over and we lose there can be something particularly with art as well where if you're creating and uh, you know you've got a, an exhibition coming up and you have to get the work done and and it's good to have a deadline it pushes you but there can be an element of racing towards a deadline it takes the joy out of something so I did a lot of art recently and it was just about playing with paint it was just about enjoying it it was just about seeing what happened there was no rhyme or reason. There was no, you know, I had thought maybe I'll do an exhibition in July, but that's not going to happen. So, so in a way, it freed me up to paint just for me, to just enjoy it. And so that's what it's saying. Like, don't forget that, that the reason you're doing these things, the reason you have these ideas, the reason you take part in these creative endeavors is because they bring you joy and satisfaction. So to pile too many things in at once, overstretching yourself means you don't enjoy it. You lose the love for it. But also it means that it becomes a stress. And then you end up being a stressed person and you have this stressed energy. And if you're going around with this stressed energy, it's almost like, you know, no one gets the best of you. And so it's remembering that people love you for your creativity and for your fun and excitement. But if you're overworked and overstretched, then they can't see that uh, life force anymore. And so everything just feels kind of tainted. It's almost like, um, uh, you know, metal, beautiful metal that becomes rusty. You know, it, it, it loses its shine. So to shine, you might have to think of a different way to take part in these things, to add these things to your life, but not all at once, not squeezing everything in at once, okay? So the next card is the Page of Cups, which is usually a youthful card. It can, I think, represent Pisces. There's a little fish popping out of that uh, chalice of water. The water, the cup elements are water, and water is about emotions. So classically, you're looking at the star signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces here, which is very emotional, very watery, um, you know, really connected to that sensitivity as well. Um, and there's a youthful energy here. And there's an offering of a cup. So cups are love. So there's an offering of love from a youthful water sign here. So it could be youthful in mind, uh, youthful in beauty, youthful in age. But there's a definite offering. And it's coming in with that uh, newness. You know, it's, it's, it's not a, an old wise person. It's someone who is new and has enthusiasm and has uh, freedoms and uh, energy as well. But they are sensitive. They are connected to that inner side of them. So they're bringing that forward. So let's just see what the, the book says with that. So it can be the birth of something new as well. It can be a new child or a new beginning in terms of a relationship. So because it's uh, the page, it tends to be early stages. So it can be about youth, but also the beginning. So the, the, the earliest stage. And it can be the emergence of the feelings within you as well. So feelings and emotions and love emotions and how they start. And they start as a, you know, a little flame. And then as you grow into a relationship, they begin to burn bright. But you might just have a sense of a feeling of a, of a love interest or a love for someone. 
So it might be just the beginnings of that, that the emotional connection that you're starting with someone. It could be about a change of heart also on an emotional matter. <coughs> so it could be something new coming in, something new idea or some new creative element. And that might point to the Ten of Wands. So if there is this creative element that, that you need to add into this pile, that you're going to have to make room for it. You're going to have to drop something so you can introduce this new element that's coming in. Introduce this new cup, this new offering, this new activity that interests you and is coming in. So it's gentle, it's sensitive, it's less exuberant to the fire. The fire is fast and furious and passionate. The water is softer, it's more yielding, it's more uh, flowing, it's more accepting and understanding. The fire tends to go whew, straight away, 100 miles an hour. The, the water tends to go, okay, I see the end. I don't have to go 100 miles an hour. In fact, I'll enjoy this bit and this bit and this bit because all of it is sensory and tasty and you feel it. It's feeling, emotion. And by running to the end, you miss that. So there is a sensitivity to it. It's perhaps more passive, more introverted, more reflective. And it can symbolize something that is unformed yet. So it's, it's in the process, it's in the new beginnings, it's the early stages. So it's not quite at the end point, it's not quite formed, it's not reached maturity. So it's not coming in as an older, wise person. It's, it's perhaps a youthful person who hasn't fully developed in maturity, who hasn't uh, achieved all the things they want to achieve and learned from that life lesson. It can be quite fresh and quite um, exuberant is the word, but just, you know, excited by life and not trodden down by, you know, challenges that have happened. There's still that positivity and that life force that is loving in nature. So there's a wealth of potential and possibility in terms of a relationship or a creative level as well, although it's still in its early stages. So that's interesting. So there's there's going from <coughs> being overburdened, having all these creative ideas and trying to keep them all and take them all to the town and not losing sight of any single one of them. And then we have the cup going in. Well, hang on, here's a new idea. And perhaps this is perhaps this is part of the way. Perhaps this is looking at different ways rather than overburdening and trying to force things and push all of these ones to where you want to go. Let's look at it slightly differently. Let's look what's offering. How do I feel about each of these ones? Which ones do I want to bring with me? Which ideas, which creative endeavors do I want to bring with me? What else is starting here? You know, there's a reflection here. How does this reflect on my life? What new growth? is there in my life? You know, what new emotion am I feeling? How am I feeling about these wants? So these are the questions you might want to ask yourself. Because then we get delivered the king of wands. So the king of wands, he has learned, he has lived, he is passionate, he is strong. He tends to be Leo. You've got the lions in the background. So very courageous, very brave, very free, very royal, very powerful. So the King of Wands is sitting on his throne and he is holding on to his one wand. And that is the true creative essence of him. So rather than juggling with lots of ideas, he has embodied the entirety of creativity and he is holding it in one hand because he is in control. He is in a position of power. He understands his passions. He understands his place in the world. He understands his royalty. And he's a very creative person that could be in the arts, in the music, in writing, anything creative. 
He is very powerful in that. And he's older, so he's wise. He has lived a little. You go from the page, which here is the page of cups, which is young and innocent and new beginnings and early stages of life. And you go from the page to the, uh, what's after the page? The knight. So you go from the page to the knight to the king. So this is a gentleman who's a little bit older and he has lived a little bit more in life and he has learned from that and he is coming in possibly as your new idea your new relationship your new romantic connection and he has this fiery side and he is passionate and he is straightforward so let's see what the book says about the knight of sorry the king of wands pardon me I don't know if you can hear my tummy rumbling. I'm hungry. Um, so the King of Wands certainly is a very passionate, fiery element. So he's very active. He would like to go here, there, and everywhere. And it can be man or woman. It's just someone who's a bit more mature. And this is the energy that they present. So they're active, re restless, impatient. They're born leaders. They crave power and they wish to share that with everyone around them. The classic uh, fire sign, the classic king of wands is someone who's very charismatic, someone who's very charming, someone who has this energy and it's, it's quite attractive. You know, it's lovely to be around their energy, particularly Leo's because it's very warm and open and and just, you know, the, the, the life and soul of the party, but with a sensitivity to it too. Uh, he's fun to be around, like I said, and can be exhausting because the, the fire kind of burns quite quickly and it's very active. And particularly for um, the water signs, this can be a bit uh, difficult to be around because they're, as we said, they're slower, more passive, more wanting to enjoy the journey rather than getting to the end. He encourages others to come into his spell, to come into his web. So he's very much charismatic and uh, endearing to people. And he's a, way, he's, a, he's a way to kind of grasp you and this emotional nature, particularly the heart energy, that the heart energy becomes very open. So his main abilities lies in the talent to encourage others and he believes in himself and he inspires trust in others. Um, so he usually has a lot of friends, a lot of admirers, a lot of love interest. He can spread himself quite thin. So that can point to the Ten of Wands as well, having all these different love interests and the the fire sign is, is spreading himself very thin. So there's a sense of not being able to give any particular one deep uh, focus and deep attention, which is what the page is signifying. One cup, just one cup here coming forward. One cup full of emotion, full of love. And perhaps in the uh, older stages of his life, he realizes the importance of that one cup, one wand that he's holding. People in his life might not stay with him for very long, and that can be uh, that can just be a discontentment for him, and um, because you know he might get easily bored, but also they might not be able to keep up with him. So it might point to such a such a person entering the life. So be aware of, you know, someone who's coming in, possibly a male or a male type energy, it can be male or female that are showing that type of energy, but someone who is more mature, someone who's lived a lot, someone who has a lot of connections, a lot of people around them, uh, likes to keep it that way, but is learning actually that they just want the one one. They want to focus on the one creative love passion uh, relationship possibly 
it all can also mean that you should develop these kind of qualities as well. Develop that confidence, develop that positivity, develop that element of fun and freedom. And maybe be okay with taking some risks. And that can be difficult for the Page of Cups. Um, they can be at the new beginnings because, uh, you know, it's very early stages and they can be, you know, that can be risky. But there's also that sensitivity and that emotion which can be difficult to plow ahead with a new endeavor. Whereas if you embrace the King of Wands, that confidence, that inner power, that knowing yourself, knowing you're, a, you know, a good person, that you're charismatic, that you can get people's attention, that you can hold an audience, that that um, sort of uh, taking on those kind of qualities will help you make the changes, drop what you don't need to to take with you, and move on to something new. And it actually might uh, explain uh, an artistic or creative project which is coming to fulfillment. So there might be these lots of these ideas and then you might uh, create one element out of them. You might create a new thing. You might have this new idea, this new beginning or this sense of trying something new. And then this is telling you, yes, it can happen. We can create it. We have the power. It is something that we are able to do. So those are the tarot. And as I was just shuffling, I thought I would pick some others from the uh, Ask Your Guides uh, tarot. Well, they're oracle cards, really. So they're Ask Your Guides. And the first card was boredom. And this is what happens. We can get um, bored as well. We can get bored with what we've been carrying and we feel we have to drop it. We have to lay something down because we're just bored of it. And here you can see there's lots of spiritual guides, particularly the wolves. And the wolves are about teachers. And this is a number four. So four is about your foundation. You're building something new. So we've got the new idea. We're dropping the old things that have you know, why are we carrying all these things that we're bored of? And we're stepping forward into this completion. Four is that completion. We've got all these higher aspects of the wolves. So that's working together with people. The wolves are a pack. You have your leader, absolutely. But you also work together as a team. And you can see here there are there is a heart being gifted to these people as well. So we've got a lady and a young child and a, a, a male as well. So it could be a relationship. It could be someone is opening their heart to you. Someone is giving love. So that fiery sign might be, you know, coming from his spiritual side, might be developing, might be growing, might be maturing. And in that is able to bring you high vibrational heart love and you're accepting it and receiving it. And it's also spiritual teachers. So connecting to the higher realms, connecting to the stars, connecting to guides, connecting to the uh, subtler realms can give you direction on how to move out of boredom, how to change the way you do things. It's this higher energy coming in which is requiring that you change things. And often when you're bored, it's not necessarily that you're bored, but the way you do things isn't working anymore. It's time to change something, okay? The next card was rest, which is the Holy Spirit. And sometimes to decide what we need to change, we need to rest. We've got the peace dove coming in as well. So that's bringing that lighter element, that higher element of divine peace, love, harmony, purpose. And you can see the person here is sitting back on the chair and having a read. And again, we've got the, the ancient ancestors, the spiritual stag there in the background, observing, overseeing. The nature spirits are important here. 
And so there's greed, there's new growth, there's new ideas. And this points to the page again, 24. So there's an element of the two, which is coupledom, which is uh, 2022, and the four again here, which is the foundation. So perhaps building foundation for two. And reading, it's reading, it's passing the time, it's stopping. We don't stop anymore. We need to stop and take a rest. And usually in stopping and taking a rest, we can think clearly. We can drop all these ideas and we can think clearly. Oh, my tummy is so hungry. And how do we do the next phase? What is it that's being asked of us? Where is it we want to go? Well, the King of Wands wanted us to be creative. And here we have the card of creativity. So creativity in whatever it means to you is essential at this time. It's coming forward. This is a double whammy of creativity, of using the creative fire energy. And it is being required that you express this side of yourself. And you can see the butterfly here. So that is how you transform. That is how you make these changes, be it music, dance, art. There is a great period of transformation coming in and using creativity to do that, to help people change using creativity, but also to tap into that part of yourself and go deeper. By using creativity, you can do that. As I said, I was painting in the last few days and it just takes you into a different space and it undoes all the knots within you and it heals. It really does free and clear you up. And we've got all the colors of the rainbow here. So it's acknowledging all the different elements, all the different gener um, the different uh, chakra points, the different energy systems, you know, the heart energy, the higher energies, the lower energies, which are your grounding energies. And three and seven here, so that's 10 again. So that's how do you manage all these creative activities? Perhaps these are ideas as well. You've got all these ideas. You've got all these jobs to do. So, so let's do them. Let's get creative. Let's take it apart and look at what we need to do one at a time. So do you need to play some music one day? Make a day for that. Do you need to make sure you include some dance into your life? Make space for that. Do you want to uh, paint? Uh, make space for that. So it is about, you know, having all these different creative elements which make up a wonderful creative um, toolbox in a sense. And moving forward with it, being sensitive to your own ideas, being sensitive to your creative nature. You know, creativity is a very sensitive thing. It's very sensual. And so you're looking at that creative energy in the king that power that comes from being creative, that tuning in that comes, that confidence. We gain so much confidence when we're creative. We do problem solving. We switch brain waves. It's doing so much benefit from, for us. So we get so much from it. So this is an encouragement to take part and do some something creative. So that's how I'm going to leave it for now because I'm quite hungry, as you can hear. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I do want to do a channel, so I might do that in a moment or two. But if you're thinking of where you are and that you're a bit bored and that you're overburdened and that you have this new idea that you want to add in as well, you're going to have to play around with it. You're going to have to take some rest. You're going to have to think it out and then you're going to have to act on it. You're going to have to be that creative self. And that can be in your expression as well, in how you come across to the world, in imbuing the, uh, yourself with the, the fire sign traits, you know, the fun, the energy, the passion, uh, the confidence. You know, bring all of that in and that will develop. The more creative you are, the more that will develop. It does build self-confidence and self-esteem as well. 
So that's what we want for you. We want you to be able to express yourself more and by knowing yourself more and by activating these elements of yourself, particularly through creative endeavors and through these new, perhaps new ideas, new elements, fresh, new, um, uh, you know, the beginnings of this new idea that you've got. That's, that's the way to move forward. So thank you very much. 35 minutes, my goodness. I will leave that with you. Take care for now and I hope to see you again soon. Lots of love. Blessings. Bye-bye.